everyone, Pratima here. So in the past couple of months, a lot of brands have launched their mid-range phones and at the same time, we've seen a lot of premium mid-range phones getting some nice, sweet price cuts. Hence, I think this is the right time to go through my top picks of all the phones that you can get under the 30,000 price point and I'm confident that I can help you get what you're looking for. But um, unlike my previous buy guide videos, this time I'll be going through them categorically. So let's start with the smartphone that has the best set of cameras in this price range and for me last year Samsung Galaxy S21 FE the Snapdragon version is still the best. If you remember it was super duper overpriced when it launched it cost like 50,000 rupees but now you can get it for less than 30,000 rupees these days and at that price this is easily the best camera phone out there. Yes it does not have the newest of image sensors or 200 megapixel resolution cameras like most of the competition but the S21 FE powers through with its sheer computational photography alone so whether it's daytime or night when I'm shooting a wide landscape or a portrait of my friends this guy offers an incredibly reliable point and shoot camera experience. The S21 FE has that classic Samsung color science with a slight touch up in terms of saturation which looks quite pleasing to the eyes. It handles things like dynamic range, exposure and details very well too. Besides photos, the S21 FE also impresses big time in the video department. It lets you shoot at up to 4K 30fps from all of its cameras and except for the ultrawide and the telephoto lens, Samsung has even enabled 4K 60fps video recording option for the primary as well as the selfie shooter. Nice. And I like the non-camera side of things on the S21 FE as well. It looks great, there is proper IP68 dust and water resistance and an excellent AMOLED display on top of some of the most dependable software you can find on a smartphone. However, one thing you need to be aware of is this phone will only be updated up to Android 15 which is until next year. So if you want something with a more or less similar camera experience and a much longer update cycle, I would recommend the newly launched Samsung Galaxy A35 instead. It ships with the latest One UI 6.1 based on Android 14 and there are four more years of software updates to look forward to here. Um, however, I will strictly suggest gamers to stay away from this thing since its Exynos 1380 chip is simply not built for gaming. For casual performance, it can handle just fine but don't expect much on the gaming front. But the good thing is that the Galaxy A35's cameras are more or less on par with the S21 FE. It does not have that 3x zoom lens for portraits and the 4K video recording option from the ultra wide angle lens. Um, but overall, I am quite happy with its cameras after testing them. I especially like how it performs in challenging high dynamic range conditions with well managed highlights, shadows, and everything else. However, say you click a lot of portraits and want a phone that takes excellent portraits rates, then the Realme 12 Pro Plus is definitely what you would want in your pocket. That's because it has a dedicated 3x periscope telephoto camera with a 71mm equivalent focal length and OIS support which captures amazing portraits. Easily the best I've seen from a mid-range phone while it can even go toe-to-toe -to -toe against other much more expensive phones in this contest. The subject focus here looks great, there's an ample amount of details to peek into and it does not tend to beautify the subject's face that much either. Unlike what I've seen on most Chinese phones these days. Its edge detection uh, could have been better, mostly in terms of finer details like subject's hair, but I would not worry too much about it. Besides 3x portraits, the rest of the camera on the Realme 12 Pro Plus is also pretty decent, nothing extraordinary though, um, at least not on the same level as the Galaxy A35 or the S21 FE I just talked about. The Realme 12 Pro Plus is also one gorgeous, gorgeous looking phone, especially this submarine blue variant that I've got with me. But apart from the cameras and design, I must say this guy is quite average in other aspects um, like this display does not get bright enough outdoors or it's bloatware infested software, a Realme UI is pretty much OnePlus's Oxygen OS in disguise but those bloatware apps and their recommendations are just 
the worst. So let me bring over the Motorola Edge 40 next, which avoids all the shortcomings of the Realme 12 Pro Plus. It's got a near stock Android experience, so things like unwanted pre-installed apps are out of the question here. You will also like how Motorola has sprinkled in a bunch of useful features as well, so this whole thing does not feel boring or anything. But I really, really think Motorola should be doing much better when it comes to software updates. The Edge 40 only has two platform upgrades and three years of security updates to its name, whereas Motorola is also pretty slow in pushing those updates. Nevertheless, the Motorola Edge 40 is incredibly well built. It's quite sleek, lightweight, and feels comfortable to use too. It's um, IP68 rated against dust and water damage. So yeah, easily an A plus in the design department. I'm also a big fan of its display from superb colors to a buttery smooth 144 Hz refresh rate and 1200 nits of peak brightness. It's got them all. And Motorola has done an excellent job by complementing it with a set of great sounding stereo speakers as well. I was actually considering the Motorola Edge 40 for the best balanced phone category, but then I remembered just how unreliable and unoptimized its cameras are. For both photos and videos, it's just not as good as the competition. Okay, so let's talk about gaming phones and the Poco X6 Pro is easily the best pick if you're damn serious about gaming. Powered by MediaTek's Dimensity 8300 Ultra chip, alongside the fastest memory and storage available on a smartphone, the POCO X6 Pro is an absolute beast in the gaming arena. It comfortably beats all the phones in its price segment in terms of gaming. It has no trouble maintaining a steady 90fps gameplay in PUBG Mobile, whereas I could play Genshin Impact at a stable 30fps under high graphics settings as well. And the X6 Pro's thermals are perfectly up to the task too. I know some of those temperature data you're seeing here suggest otherwise, although let me remind you that the X6 Pro is pushing much higher number of frames on average. So yeah, there is no denying it, this is the best gaming phone under 30,000 rupees in India right now. Um, so other than all of its gaming capabilities, you also get a very good AMOLED display here with an in-display fingerprint sensor and a nice vegan leather design as well. Even its software side of things is rather promising thanks to the new HyperOS platform based on Android 14. And the promise of three years of OS and four years of security updates is also nice to see from a brand like Poco. But the cameras, the cameras are where the Poco X6 Pro disappoints big time. Um, it has more than capable hardware, sure, but uh, Poco's post-processing is just all over the place. So if you want a little bit of this and a little bit of that, then this year's Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus is also one of the most improved mid-range phones of 2024. You get an IP68 rating, the first on a Redmi phone, a faster performance, super fast 120 watt fast charging, and above average cameras. And all of this add up wonderfully to deliver an incredibly well-rounded experience that's hard to come by in this price range, actually. Its display is perfectly something that I am fond of. That over sharpening thing on YouTube videos I mentioned in my unboxing video has not been solved yet, unfortunately. But besides that, the Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus has one heck of an AMOLED screen. And I am happy to see that Redmi has also upped its camera game. Uh, even though it uses the same image sensors as last year's Note 12 Pro Plus, the improved imaging pipeline and the superior image signal processor on the Dimensity 7200 Ultra are clearly working their magic. There are a few things that I'm not fond of with its cameras like average portraits and the average ultra wide angle lens or its videography aspect, but the Note 13 Pro Plus earns a solid B plus from me as far as the cameras are concerned. But if I have to pick the most balanced phone under 30,000 Indian rupees, it would be this guy, the OnePlus Nord 3. I really like this phone when it first launched and I love it even more these days since it's much easier on the wallet. It's available for some 29,000 rupees right now and it offers a whole lot of good specs for that price. The OnePlus Nord 3 has an incredible hands-on feel with just the right amount of heft, while OnePlus's signature alert slider also comes in handy more than I can remember. I love its display as well. You're looking at a flat AMOLED panel with thin bezels all around, which is well equipped for every occasion. 
and the Nord 3 does not disappoint in the performance department either. Its Diversity 9000 chip handles pretty much everything you throw at it, like multitasking and all, whereas its gaming talent has gotten considerably better too. I remember it struggling to maintain stable FPS in all sorts of game back then, but after redoing my gaming tests, I found that Nord 3 even gives the Poco X6 Pro a run for its money now, both in terms of FPS stability and temperatures. I wish its cameras had seen a similar glow up though with updates. Um, don't get me wrong, the Nord 3's cameras are fairly competitive and all, but it's certainly the weakest aspect of this phone. Alright, so that concludes my top picks for the best phones under 30,000 rupees in India. And by the end of this video, I hope I've made your buying decision just a little simpler. Um, now, I know uh, that some of you are thinking, wait a minute, why didn't you include the new Nothing Phone 2A? Um, well, I've been testing it out and from what I can tell so far, it's undeniably a great phone with a couple of compromises though. But I left it out for this video because I feel like it would be more suitable in the sub 25,000 category instead. So uh, let me know if you would want me to work on that video next. Till then, I'm Pratima Adhikari and I will see you in my next video.